Hey there, beautiful people. Welcome to Legacy Studio and Draw Too Much. Uh, I have not planned to do this video. I ran over to Hobby Lobby, grabbed some art supplies, came back here, and I thought, you know what? I want to just go ahead and test these different things out to let you see maybe some things that you might want to know. Uh, we're covering uh, papers from Hobby Lobby and their Master's Touch series, as well as some of the pens that I use. Uh, I've just gotten into the world of um, fountain pens, and I love them. Got two more coming in the mail tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Yes, I do watch Peter Draws. Uh, so, and actually, he's the reason why I got my first pen, which he laughed at, but I loved the idea of, which is the Moon Man Mini. I love this thing. It's an incredible pen. Also got a... Hong Love, I think it's called Hong Love. Is that what it is? Hong, Hong, Hopong. And actually there's a longer name to it, but um, it's another really nice little pen. Love that one. And then I grabbed something at Walgreens the other day just to see, which is the Zebra uh, 301. And honestly, I would much rather my other pens, but still. So the papers that I picked up today, would be a drawing pad, Master's Touch drawing pad. Now this is supposed to be dry media, but it's supposedly a smooth surface. Still has more tooth than I would prefer if you're a pencil artist, sure. But I don't like tooth. I do not like tooth. Um, here is mixed media, and of course they have their 50% off sale. So buck 50, why not? Um, wants even more tooth uh, than the drawing pad stuff. Uh, I also picked up this spiral sketchbook, uh, which says it's good for pencil, chalk, graphite, crayon, ink, and light watercolor. Um, and it has a pretty strong tooth, and it looks like it's the same tooth on both sides of the page. And then, uh, because I am definitely more of a marker guy and a pen guy, I also picked up Bristol. I love Bristol. I love Bristol XL, but I can't find them anywhere. So if you're dealing with a shortage on your side of things and you're having a hard time finding paper, that's why I'm testing these because I love XL Bristol and I can't find it anywhere. And then uh, this right here, which is marker pad. So everything was on sale 50% off. So when you pay $5 for marker pad and $5 for smooth Bristol, which definitely does feel really nice and smooth, then uh, that piques my interest. Now, I don't have a face-down camera or anything like that. I'm not doing that, so I am just going to test it in front of you as best I can, and we'll make do. I do apologize about that. Maybe one day I'll set up an overhead camera again. I'm just not quite in that, that setup to pull that off right now. Also just picked up some jelly rolls, but I wanted to try the biggest, boldest size they had. So this is the 5 uh, and I was uh, even surprised that Hobby Lobby carried Jelly Roll, so that was good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use my Moon Man Mini to test out all these different papers and see what we can get. We'll go ahead and start with the the small draw pad and the uh, and the mixed media pad. The thing I noticed is the drawing pad has 50 sheets, and the mixed media pad only has 18 sheets. That's very interesting to me that it's that th that little. So let's test the drawing pad first, which is not as hard a tooth as the mixed media. So we'll see what happens here, and I hope I'm in some kind of focus. So, um, and, and my thing is bleed. I hate bleed. Bleed, I hate. So let's see what we get here with this. Okay. Um, very scratchy. This is not usually a scratchy pen. And it's not really giving ink very well. Oh, maybe. Okay, might help to hold the pen the right way. You know what, that could look a lot worse, admittedly. That could look a whole lot worse. Let me see if I can get a focus on that. It's not quite coming into focus. I apologize, guys. That's terrible. I mean for it to come into focus, but I probably have the camera set up to focus in a key area. Uh, very little bleed, actually. On the tips of things, yes, but honestly, for sketching, that works well. So the drawing pad, that's uh, excellent for all dry media. For me, that works. And I would say that my pen, my Moon Man, excuse me, is actually, 
It's not a dry nib. I would say it's a medium wet nib. So there's, I mean, you can wipe it pretty quickly with your finger. All right, next is the mixed media, except wet and dry media. So let's see, much heavier tooth, much, much heavier tooth. And like I said, I'm sorry once again on this. This is going to be a stupid video that everyone's going to dislike. And you're like, well, put more time into the in, into the editing and stuff and set up another camera. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, this one's doing the same thing. I admit it feels deeper. Um, it feels like the ink is settling into the paper deeper. Um, but I'm not seeing bleed, so I'm thankful for that. But that texture is really, really uncomfortable if you're drawing with a, with a nib. All right, now one thing I really wanted to work was this spiral sketchbook. I mean, this is the first time I've bought myself a hard-sided spiral sketchbook because I always buy myself XLs. I got a ton of XLs just over there and all over the room here because I love XLs. Paper is pretty... It's toothy on both sides, pretty toothy, but not as bad as the Mixed Media Master's Touch. Let's see what we get here. If this doesn't bleed, I'll be a happy boy-ish, because it does look toothy. Okay. I don't mind that, actually doesn't look like it's bleeding very much. Yeah. Yeah, no bleed. No bleed at all. Because I want a sketchbook that I can sketch in specifically with a pen, with a fountain pen. For pencil chalk, graphite crayon, ink, and light watercolor... The only thing I can see is just the tooth of the paper kind of showing through the sketch, and I know you can't really see that. It's very much out of focus. You can't see that. If you want more videos like this where I mess around with fountain pens, then let me know, and I'll go the extra mile and figure out how to set up an extra camera uh, that could get up close and we can do that sort of stuff. But you guys haven't shown that kind of interest in this part of the channel, so I haven't put the heart or effort into it. Okay, uh, so right there, that's all pretty cool, actually. I'm pretty pleased with that. And like I said, this is a fairly wet, um, well, medium wet kind of thing. All right, next is the Bristol. Um, now, I, I think the Bristol is awesome texture. This Bristol I'm actually very pleased with because it's very, very smooth. Very smooth. You'd want this for doing calligraphy on with brush pens. Let's see how it writes, though. That's downright beautiful. Downright beautiful. The texture's good. As that ink is drying, it actually changes gradient as it does. That's beautiful. It is taking a while for that ink to dry. I can still see wet spots on the paper where I wrote on it. If I was to close the paper right now, it would still, it would, it would uh, bleed onto the other side. So definitely that ink is going to take time to dry. It may even be dripping. Hard to say. I think it's actually dripping a little on the tails here. It is drying, but it is taking its time, and I do think it's dripping. <sighs> It is definitely taking its time to dry. And with how those tails are pointing down on the ends there, I do think that's a drip. So if you're not planning on putting down a lot of ink, then you're okay. Let's try a big load of it. And see if we get any bleed. Okay, definitely, let's turn it in a way that would be unnatural for the ink to flow and see what happens as it dries. 
while it's doing that, let's not waste time. Let's move on with the next one. I'll just prop this up so it can dry. Next up is the marker pad. Super smooth paper designed specifically for markers. So we'll find out. It is definitely super smooth. And it feels like a vellum. Now I think this Bristol may be actually vellum. This marker pad is specifically... Yeah, that's a pretty thin piece of paper. It's almost like a vellum. I'm pretty sure that's vellum. So let's see what we get here. Okay. That's drying up pretty quickly, actually. can't tell if it's drooling uh, or, or that's still drying. I'm looking over at the other paper, and it is still drying over there. That is not accepting that dry, that, that wet ink, and probably because this is made more for markers. Uh, and that Bristol, I'm surprised that Bristol isn't sucking it in more. Both of these are taking their sweet time to dry up my, uh, my ink. Now, with a marker, I'm sure they'd be fine, but that is very, very interesting. And so that's the uh, Moon Man Mini, Mini right there. Let's try my, uh, let me get this name right here, Hong Dion. Okay, this is a Hong Dion. That's what I meant, Hong Dion. So, and it says here, the light of hope, Hong Dion. So it's a Hong Dion pen. This one uses a, it says 1997 on here. 18 karat gold fine nib. So let's just go ahead and try it on this here and see. This actually spits out quite a bit of ink for me usually. Yeah, this is definitely putting out a lot more ink. But I also write on the side directly against the, the, the bending angle. Definitely needs dry time, and a lot of it. So if you're planning on using this, I'm using carbon ink um, in my pens. I love carbon ink because it is water, uh, non-water soluble, which is very important for me since I do watercolor, and a lot of the different formats that I like to paint in would be soilables. Uh, watercolor, gouache, things of that nature. So I want my line work to always be uh, solid. I, I don't want it to, to spoil. So that's all I got. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm surprised that these are taking longer to dry. Um, and I do live in Montana, uh, quite, a, quite up higher than down south. Humidity is nil up here. It's actually snowing outside. Uh, and so I hope that helps. I don't know if that helps you. I just know that as I'm shopping around up here, I can't find Excel sketchbooks anywhere anymore, and I am on the hunt to find whatever I can. And I'm I'm having to test paper to see what's going to work. Everything seems to work with my with my fountain pens, uh, and especially these guys. Thankfully, that ink dries fairly quickly. Oh, I do have a little bit of. Uh, do have a little bit of bleed on that when I rub it. And I don't know if you can see that. There you go. You can see my, where my finger rubbed it. So that's interesting. So even these might need a little bit of dry time. Uh, I doubt this does. No, this absolutely does not. That is dry as a bone and uncomfortable as a bone. And this drawing pad, that's dry as well, even with heavily thick ink right there. So... There you go, my friends. That's the story, and I'm sticking with it, as my dad likes to say. And I'm going to wrap up this video here. If you found it helpful, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Don't judge me on bad camera work because uh, you haven't shown interest in this before. If you do show interest in this, I'll go the extra mile, and we'll figure out how to set up another camera to make it work. So until next time, God bless you all. We'll see you next time right here on Legacy Studio and Draw Too Much. Peace.